Well, welcome to Modeling Time with me, Brian Vanna. Well, I got the uh, cab done, and now it's time to move on to the last phase of this build. That being the deconstruction, the construction, and the painting and finishing of the hood. So, what do we do first on any build? We deconstruct it. That's right. So, what I need to do is uh, deconstruct this hood. That would be removing the inertial filter hatch, removing the exhaust hatch, removing the dynamic brake fans, and all of the radiator fans. Um, I need to cut out the brake um, pump area or the minor brake area. I need to remove the sanding hatches front and back. And I need to fill all of the grab iron holes. And I believe that is it. So, um, without going on anymore and trying to think of things to say, um, let's get right to it and start deconstructing this cap, or this cap, this hood. All right, it's time to get working on this thing. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna locate the center on the um, sanding hatches and drill a small hole and that'll help me locate for when I do the new sanding hatch because these are going to be cut off. So I'm just looking down the center. My eyeball will typically find the good center. That looks good. All right, so okay, so that takes care of that. Now, when I go to drill for the um, sand hatches, I'll have the uh, hole to locate, and then I can enlarge it gradually with larger drill bits till it gets to the right size. All right, so it's time to start cutting off these parts. Now I take the dynamic brake hatch off because I cut that on a separate, uh, not on the shell, I'm sorry. So now, I made this block a long time ago. Um, I knew, um, I didn't know them really, really well, but I got to be somewhat acquainted with them, a, a person who owned a machine shop. And so I used him and I sent him the dimensions of just the block, the height, the width, and the thickness, and he cut it for me. And then I went in and put all the, the um, cutouts and stuff for the things that fit underneath here. Which, right now, if you see this little weight attachment point in there, I need to cut that off. So what I do is I take these sprue nippers, and I don't have the strength to just nip right through it, so I just push it down around it, and then I rotate it. and it cuts it right off. Now I need to make sure that that's flat in there. So I'll take a chisel knife and just scrape it. So there's no protrusions sticking up inside of there. So that's all taken care of. Now what I do is these two holes, or these, I'm sorry, these two posts that are in the back back there, those will be cut off later, but I have these two holes here and here, and that will fit right down in there. So now it's solid against the bottom here against the bottom underneath the fans and against the bottom underneath the 
inertial filter hatch. So now that's pretty solid on there and I'm not overly concerned about it lifting off as I'm cutting but I want to be safe. So I use some blue tape, some wide blue tape, cut the piece off. There we go. And I'll do this to both sides. Get this out here. So I'll burnish the tape down over the shell. And then I'll come in here and I will lift this up and press it down over the lip of the shell onto the block take a knife because this is um, where it's going to be clamping here so I don't want tape there and I'll just cut right across there There we go. Now do the same thing to the other side. All right. Okay. So let me get everything set up at the mill, and we'll start with this, the inertial filter hatch, and then we'll move to the um, ex um, fan hatch. Okay, so I've got it set up in the mill. I've got, the, of course, the shell secured onto the fixture. I've got an eighth inch milling bit that I only use for plastic so it stays nice and sharp. Now through experience, and this goes for other Kato um, shells, I think the SD40 is the same. On the, um, on the um, inertial filter hatch, they're, uh, well, basically the shell is not perfectly square all the way across. Even though it's setting on a square block and it's squared up in the vise, the surface has high points and low points, or the plastic has high points and low points. Through experience, this side right here, this corner, is the high point. So as you see me milling down, once I clean this corner off, you'll still see an edge here and over here. And you won't see it on the back because the camera's on the other side. So what I'm going to have to do is once I get down to this corner here, I am going to um, lower the milling bit as I go forward so I can clean that off evenly. And it'll, once I get it down to a point where I'm happy with, then I'll come in with a block sander and sand the top off. So here we go. Oh, real quick, I'm going to show all the milling, so this video is going to be a little long, um, no surprise there, but people have said that they like to see the milling, the process and all that, so I'm going to show all of it. So we're going to do this one, and then these next, or the, I'm sorry, you can't see it, but the fan's next.
Okay, so I'm all the way down to the top of the hood in this back corner here. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but the dirty portion you can see is a grayish yellow around the front and starting right here on the back and over here. So it's this is the high point here, and then it goes lower and lower and lower and it gets lower over here. Same with over here, there's still there's still some plastic that needs to be cut off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna raise the column a little bit. I'm gonna loosen the column so it's easy to turn. Let me check this. Nope. There we go. Okay. So now, clean everything off here. So I'm going to start in this corner and I'm going to just touch it. And then as I'm going forward, I'm going to slowly lower the, the milling column. I have a very, very small line right across here that I can see that I need to cut down to. So I'll just slowly lower it as I go forward manually. Do all this manually. See if we can get this out of the way. There we go. Make it so it doesn't glare on there so much.
All right, so I've got the top, everything cut off here, and I'll sand all that off. Now, you'll notice that on the front, I didn't get the cut all the way across here, but that edge is so small, it's not even a thousandth, I'll be able to sand all that off with the block. So let's take this back over to the workbench and get that all sanded down. I mean, you'll notice there are lines across here, and it, it's okay that you don't get it all perfect with the mill. We'll fine tune that with some scraping and sanding. Okay, now we're gonna take some water and a sanding block. I made this block out of aluminum and I just wrapped sanding paper around it. And a knife, and we're gonna do some cleanup. So let me zoom out. Okay, it's all the way zoomed out. Let me move the light out of the way here. Let me lift this a little so I can work back further. And now I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to clean the carefully clean this off. This yellow plastic is really soft. Some water on there. Water helps to lubricate the blade sliding across so it doesn't catch and skip. Now let's do some wet sanding. I've got everything theoretically on the same plane right now. So, and it's close enough that we can now sand. And do a circular motion, keeping most of the pressure right on the center. Because what I don't want to do is I don't want to rock this and round over the sides. So I hold the shell down tight so it doesn't rock around. And we just go in there and just start sanding. It's better to do it from this side so that you don't accidentally move your sanding block back and knock off some of those bolt heads back here and stuff like that. And keep your hand over that. And then we just do a nice circular sanding motion. And that pretty much takes care of that. Oh, there's a little bit more in there. Let me get uh, this sanding stick out. Now you gotta be careful with these flexible sanding sticks. These will round off your edge, so make sure you keep the pressure on, these, on the flat portions.
what I'm trying to do, and you, I don't know if you can see it, but there's some ridges along here from where the milling bit was cutting. And I want to make sure I get all that down onto the same plane. All right, let's do one final sanding with the block. And that's it. Now, let me try something here. Let me check something out here. Let me get this. Now, if I take a cab, the roof should be level with this, or even with that. And that's what we got. Nice and, <coughs> excuse me, smooth transition all the way across. The only thing you can feel is a difference between the smoothness, smoothness of this untouched cab and the grippiness of the sanded surface. But there's no bump or anything. So that works out. So that takes care of that. It's all done. Ready to be have a uh, have a, uh, a inertial filter hatch installed. Okay, now it's time to move back to the fan. All right, so we're back at the mill, and we got the uh, inertial all taken care of. Now it's time to cut the fans off, and also this uh, sand hatch. But the sand hatch will come last. Now, the fans have the same issue as the inertial filter did with uh, the surfaces not being flat all the way across, but not nearly as bad as the inertial filter hatch had. There we go. Let me make sure all this is on camera good. Oh, I got this in the way. There we go. Get that out of the way. How's that? That's better. And I need to move this camera back just a little bit there. There we go.
And there you see I have the, the radiator fans cut off. Now you saw that I cut the little NBW off here and here. Those are going to be replaced, so no big deal there. Now I don't want to cut down any further. This is like really, really close. I can't barely feel an edge, so I'll just sand all of that off. So we'll go back over to the bench and we'll get that done. Go. Okay, we're back at the bench. I forgot to cut the sand hatch off, but no big deal. Um, I don't think I need to really show you that. I'm just going to take the bit down, lower it until it's all cut off. I mean, same way that I did these. I just have to be careful not to cut the back of the fan hatch. Now, I could use a Plano fan hatch on here, which is, which would work. It would be fine. But I like the detail on here, and the Plano is a backup in case I screw something up on here. Then I can just put the Plano fan hatch on there. But right now, I'm going to use the Cotto fan hatch, and we're going to get these cleaned up. First thing I'll do is I'll tape up the NBWs, or the bolt heads that are on the edge of the uh, fan hatch. Okay, so what you have to be careful with is you don't sand down too much around the tape, otherwise you're going to have an edge that you've um, dug out. So we're going to try to stick to just this area and just feather it out. So the first thing I need to do is just go and get all these edges feathered in. Need the water. Because this, the softness of this plastic makes the blade kind of bite. It's like gummy. As you'll notice, I'll stop scraping as soon as the dirty part of the plastic comes clean.
Now something to keep in mind also, when you're going to cut the final um, opening out, a lot of this this yellow, this bright yellow that you see here is not going to be there. There's going to be a little bit of a sliver of it. And if you haven't noticed yet, this side is the high side of the shell. Same with this corner right here. So this side has a lot less scraping to do than this side. Now I can take this tape off and do some sanding. Get my sanding sticks out here. So we got a, uh, a coarse stick and a medium stick. I'm going to use the coarse stick first, but lightly.
All right, now that I've got the edges all feathered out, now I'll come in with the medium stick and just smooth it out a little bit. All right. I'm just looking to see if there's any gouges or anything like that in it. Everything looks smooth. Good. Now I'm going to go back over to the mill and get this um, sanding hatch cut off. And then I'll come back and I'll show you how I cut the fan holes. Oh, real quick, um, before I do any of that, I'm not going to show you fully cutting off these parts on the dynamic brake hatch because you've already seen how I cut the fans off and how I cut the um, inertial filter hatch off, which is the same as how I'll cut the um, exhaust hatch off. But what I'll show you is the tool I made for doing this. So this side, this side is for the dynamic version and this side is for the non-dynamic version so this first thing I need to do is put one of these in here to fill that and make it make this flat all the way across then this oops I need to cut this because this will cause it to stand up this little sprue tip here this plastic the new Kato plastic this whitish looking more a lighter gray stuff is a very soft also so this will go right right like that then I put that in the vise and just come in and mill it off so I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, sand hatch cut off um, I'm going to do this and then I'll come back and show you the cutting of the holes All right. well I've got the all the um, everything smoothed off I ran it through the grit blaster just to make sure that there was nothing that I missed um, any scratches and stuff like that so everything is unified in the finish so I can look over it and see if there's anything wrong but everything looks good and now let me get all my tools out and everything and I'll show you how I cut the holes for the cannon fans alright so it's now it's time to open up the holes to fit the cannon fans. So I've got all my tools out. I've got my uh, hole gauges. I've got the cannon fan that I'll use as a, um, to check the fit. Now the uh, dynamic brake and the radiator fans have the same opening so it doesn't matter whether you use a dynamic brake piece or a radiator fan piece. But I've got that. I've got my scribing tool. I've got my sanding stick and I've got the gouger I call it the gouger because if you let this thing go it'll gouge everything it gets its its teeth onto 
Um, it's a router bit. You can get it at Micromark. That's where I got them. You get them a pack of three, large, medium, and small. This is the large one. And that's what I'll use to open up the hole. <clears throat> and I'll finish the hole with the uh, sanding stick. Now, when I scribe around it, um, I will... I will use the router bit, but I won't go all the way up to the line. I'll get as close as I can to it without touching it. Now, <clears throat> the dynamic brake hole and the radiator hole are different sizes. So this side of the tool, you can see it has these um, um, cavities cut in them, or these channels cut in them. That's to fit this rounded part here, so it goes down into it like that. And I can also use that on this hole here. The dynamic brake fan has to use this side, which is a little bit smaller diameter, because see if I put it in this hole, it, it moves around a bit. There's some slop in it. But if I put it in this hole, there's no slop in it at all. This is for the small diameter, uh, 36 inch fan, goes in there. And <clears throat> I've cut these so that they're on the smaller side so that there's a good snug fit around the, the fan base. I don't want slop in them so that it, um, when I'm gluing the fan in I've got to make sure I center it. I want my centering being done with these tools. <clears throat> I have a whole bunch of other ones of these for different manufacturers. So the first thing I do, move this stuff out of the way, is we will do this hole. So I'll put that in there. I've sharpened my scribing tool. Hopefully we'll be able to see this on camera. And what I'll do is I'll care I'll, I'll press down on the tool on the fixture and I'll just go right up against it and I'll just carefully scribe making sure I'm putting pressure into this corner. Because if I, if I go too far, the tool might slip and I'll cut a line across the top of the fan head. So just do a little bit at a time. Move these other pieces out of the way. <clears throat> And there you can see I've got a nice scribe line around that one. So now we'll do the back one. And now we got a scribed circle around the back one there. And now we'll go do the center. Now I'm going to be using the Canon and Company um, 36 inch cap top radiator fan on this one. And thankfully, and it makes a lot of sense, 
uh, the diameter of this hole was cut the same as Gordon cut the uh, diameter of the um, for the uh, standard GP35 fan. So my tools, I didn't have to make a new tool. There we go. Move that part out of the way. <coughs> And there we have all three of those scribed. Now I'll turn over this tool, put it into the dynamic hatch. And now we have that one scribed. Now it's time for the gouger. All right, so let's do this first. Let me zoom back. Now there's a way to properly use these. If you don't use them right, they will chatter. So you kind of have to, you can't angle it into the hole. It kind of has to be either perpendicular or out. And we're gonna, and you want to cut since this is going to be spinning in a clockwise direction, you want to cut against the plastic. You don't want to go with the the uh, the bl with the cutting surface because it'll walk itself out and you'll lose control. So you want to go against it and just keep like a pencil, just work your way around it. I've got this set at six. Now I have to be precise with this, so if my hands get in the way or the tool get, gets in the way, I apologize for that now, but if I, if I try to work at this at an odd angle, I might ruin the part, and I don't want to do that. This cord keeps getting caught on my arm.
All right, so that one's ready for sanding. Let's get all this crap out of the way. I'll vacuum the area after I'm done here. Makes a mess. So I've got really close to the line. Let's see if you can see that. Let me zoom in slowly. Okay, so I've gotten really, really close to the line, but not on the line. So now, um, I'm going to go ahead and do these. Um, actually, I'll just show you what I do. First of all, I've got to cut those pins off on the inside because the gouger might catch those and uh, find its own way around somewhere. There we go. So I've got the pins cut off. Again, I just take the, the nipper, put it around it, and just spin it until it cuts through. All right. So now it's time to do these ones. I need to get myself a cordless Dremel. On this plastic, since it's softer, it's melting it a little bit. So I'm going to turn this down to four and see what happens. Yeah, that's better.
Okay. All right, well, on this one I got right right up to the line and slightly outside of it right there, but that's okay, it's only a very small spot. And I got, look at that. <laughs> and all that plastic, I gotta vacuum up. But anyway, now, this is simply just a piece of sanding paper wrapped around a, a um, X-Acto knife handle and then just taped up here. So right now I'll do the dynamic brake hatch off screen and I'll do one of I'll do one of these. So we're just gonna take this in here now and just go up and down and smooth out the circle. Oh one real quick note. While I'm doing 
using the gouger, I'm putting my bit down to about here. You don't want it up here because if you make a mistake and it walks out, you're going to just, it's going to be merciless on your, on your plastic. On your hands, on your face, on everything. And believe me, when those things get going, they have a mind of their own. So now, I'm just going to go around the circle and sand this out. And we'll just do one together, because I don't think you need to see me do the process on all of them. It's all the same. For the, uh, for the small hole, I have a smaller exacto knife handle with that's taped up with um, it has tape on it right now I'm going to cut off some of the some of the slough especially off this bottom edge I don't like this yellow plastic. All right, let's do a test fit on this and see what I need to do. Okay, it's not even close yet. What you want to do though is make sure you sand evenly around and use the same pressure all the way around. And take your time doing this so that you don't sand off too much. You know, it's starting to go down in there, but still needs some little bit of opening there. I don't know what grit paper this is. It might be 240. You want to take a very close look and you can see where your scribe lines haven't been sanded all the way down to and that's where you know you need to sand towards. So it's almost there. It's too snug of a fit so it's squeezing it a little bit. And I can see right there a scribe line that needs to be sanded out. So the fit problem is on this side, right over here. What I'm going for is a firm fit, but not a squeeze. So it just, not that it just drops right in, that would be too loose. I'm going for a uh, snug fit, let's put it that way. Still a little too tight. Oh, but not by much. Okay. Just a nice once around, I think it'll do it.
very little pressure kind of just letting the sandpaper do the work here and that's it perfect fit I don't think you can see it on the inside but it's nice and tight all the way around so I'm gonna go ahead and do that for these fans and this one and that'll take care of getting it ready for Canon fans okay I've got the holes all opened up so that the Canon fans will drop perfectly into them same with the uh, dynamic brake catch so that's all taken care of that portions done the next step <clears throat> is to cut out this brake area right here because I'm going to be putting in just that portion of the Canon and Company um, uh, brake uh, inset. So what I'll do, what I need to do, zoom in here a second. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I need to cut straight up on this edge all the way up to the mold parting line up here and I'm going to use this mold parting line as another guide so I will take a straight edge like this I'm going to hold it right into here And, you, and, and before I cut this out, you want to do this. So I put it right up on that edge where the battery box sits. Just like that. And I'm going to use the back end of the knife and I'm going to scribe a line. First thing, actually I need I can't do this on camera because I need to be able to see it and I can't see it on camera so I'm gonna put the straight edge right on here then I'm gonna scribe a line right up to that parting line and that'll be my guide on this side and then, and then I have the parting line on this side for a guide then I'll use a razor um, saw or this type of saw here and I'll cut just inside those marked lines just before I get to the top here and then I'll just use a, a knife and I'll scribe across to cut it out then I'll come back and um, we'll cut the uh, we'll fine cut the inside so I'll use a a, um, a brand new blade in this knife and I'll start slicing till I get it where I want it. so here I've got the line scribed in you can see that now I'll take this saw and I will start on the inside here put this down I don't want to put pressure down on this because I don't want it to snap. So there's one side. It flexes a lot, so. It's 
just like that. Now, this yellow plastic is like sawdust on everything. So now I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to slice across, being very careful that I don't slip and cut the front of the nose. Alright, so we got that cut out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just start slicing. Because this is a brand new blade. And you're really not going to be able to see a whole lot here. So let me just do a couple of slices and I'll show you. Maybe you can see a little here. But with a sharp blade, it comes off very, very easy. You have more control slicing like this than trying to uh, cut it proper in one sloop, one sloop, one swoop. You know, just coming in and cutting it with the saw or something like that. So you see how it, I'm working at it. Now, I'm going to do my best to keep straight on these lines. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you kind of want it as close to perfect as possible. Because once you put that piece in there, then you can fill around it with CA and seal it up and then sand it all out. But you want to try to get as close as perfect as possible to those lines. Okay, so you get the idea how I'm working at this, and I'll just slowly work into my scribe line and into these parting lines, a little bit at a time, and you'll get there. And then I'll come back with a sanding stick and just sand it a little bit, and then I'll, uh, I'll come back and show you what I need to do to cut off what I need on here, and then we'll get it in place. But I need to work on this at different angles that aren't conducive to filming. So, like I said, you get the idea of what I'm doing, and I'll get that all done real quick. Okay, I've cleaned up the portion that I want to cut out. I still need to cut a little bit forward on this line here, but not much. But I don't want to do that yet until I cut this part out. So what I want to keep on this part, of course, this front edge here. And then if you look on the back, there's a little bit of a lip right right there so I want to cut this all the way up to the inside or to this face of the um, 
inset. So I'm going to cut this straight down off the inset. So I'll put this in the mill, put it up like that. I'll, I'll nip this off here. Now I'll put this in the mill and just clean it straight off so it's nice and perpendicular to the edges. Then I'll come back and I'll do some test fitting because right now the, the ins once I clean this side up, the inside edge here will fit exactly where I want it. The top will be right where I want it. And then I just need to scribe a line on this edge right here where this, where this edge will meet and then get it glued in. So I'm going to go ahead and get this cleaned up. Basically, I just need to get my cutters out. Cut that off. And then go over to the mill and just clean and clean that up. Sorry, I just used these side cutters and cut that off. And then I'll clean that up in the mill. All right, so I've cut this flush on this side. And instead of cutting more off the nose, because I'm right at where the curvature comes around, I cut ten thousandths off of this edge right here. Now this almost fits perfectly. Let me get this shell out of the way. So if I slide this up in there, it almost fits perfectly but right at this edge right about here I can see a slight very very slight bulge out and this side is up against straight but it kicks out just a little bit right there not much just a little bit because I can push it in so I just in it and the gap goes from here to right there so that just means I need to do a little bit of shaving right there. So I'm going to take that out and I'm just going to come up here and I don't know if I can do this on camera. I'll, I'll just do a little bit of shaving right there. Let's see how that, at this point you're just doing very, very, very small amounts cutting off. And that right there pretty much did it. What I'll do is I'll fine tune it. Where did my sanding stick go? Oh, there it is. I'll fine tune it just a little bit with the sanding stick. And that's it. So now I just have to glue that in. So gluing it in is just a matter of lining up the edges, putting some liquid cement in there. I'll be using the Tamiya in the lime green bottle. And then I'll back it up from the back with CA. Then I'll come back to the front and put some, sin, or sin, some thin CA all the way around. Let that cure, scrape it, and then sand it. All right, so it's it's in. I just have to let the CA and the glue and the liquid cement set up, and I can come back and sand all that out. Now, one of the reasons you want to back it up with CA, I mean, of course, the main reason is for strength, but another reason is because it dries quickly, because when you cut this piece out, this corner wants to kick out a little bit. So you need to hold it so it's got the right, so it sticks out the same here as it does up here. So once the CA sets, you got it set up and then you can glue the whole, the whole thing in really well. So right now, I just have to let that set up. You can see the CA glaring in the light. So I'll come back and I'll slice that with a sharp blade, then come back and wet sand it, and that'll take care of that portion. And then we're almost done with the deconstruction and the um, 
the uh, detail prep. Um, I still need to move these holes over here. Same with these. I need to take these and put them on this side. And um, I need to drill the, the hole out larger for the sanding um, hatches. And I need to plug all of the uh, all of the um, grab iron holes. Whoop, plug all the grab iron holes. Sorry, I'm zoomed in and I got off camera. So that pretty much takes care of this. I just have to, like I said, clean it up and we're almost ready for detailing. All right, so the brake pump recess is in. It's been all sanded and uh, cleaned up. So um, after I get everything um, deconstructed. I'm going to go over this with a little bit of um, like primer gray to make sure that all of the the um, uh, joints are are proper and no there's no visible joints. Put it that way. I'm trying to search for something cool to say, but no, <laughs> not really. So anyway, so I've sanded all that out. That's in. Now I know this is a deconstruction video, but I needed to put that in because I also need to put the holes in over here and such and I don't want this piece flopping around I need it solid so it's backed up nicely on the inside with CA and everything's cool on that so that's all done um, now I need to locate this hole these this pair of holes and this pair of holes in the exact locate same location on the other side now I was thinking what I could do is I could use my um, calipers and I could line it up and you know scribe a line in and blah 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 and do that but then I came up with another idea that probably would work better so I have spare cannon parts so this is a part that's actually on on this side and it locates where those holes are supposed to be and looking at this the cannon or the cotto holes are too low compared to where Cannon put his holes at. So I'm going to use the Cannon part and if I just take it from this side and I transfer it over to this side and I put the cab in and I use this shelf right here put that up against the shelf I can get a location for those holes. Now I need and well real quick so there's a uh, Hard to, this thing sticks. Oh, that's because of this this uh, battery box latch right down here. It was sticking. So there's a door handle right here. So I cut a notch out here so that it fits around the door handle, and this piece fits right up against the cab face real nicely. And then I can come in and make marks and drill it. Now for the top, I want those holes to be in the same in the same. Um, distance off the face of the cab as here so I used the Cannon and Company nose piece and just flipped it upside down I cut all the parts off on the top and I drilled holes in it and I had to thin this edge down to go underneath the window gaskets so it will fit in just like that and then I can locate the holes there now something you need to know on most EMD units after the GP35 this is a drop grab on the GP35 it is not a drop grab so what happens is there's a spec that EMD has to follow I, I don't know if it's an OSHA spec or just a, um, a common sense spec but for somebody to reach to this grab iron this um, drop grab is over where these bolt holes are well when it's a straight grab it's a couple inches back so what you have to do is you have to drill the holes where the bolts are for the drop grab um, uh, NBWs so what I did is on the cannon piece the I drilled the hole where the bolts are not where the um, dimples are for drilling so now then when I flip this over they'll be in the right location this is a drop grab so I can use the location on the cannon part where they're at on the front the 
they are straight grabs. So Cotto's got it wrong here. These holes need to be where the bolt, hole, bolt heads are on both sides. So I'll be doing that as well. So I, <coughs> excuse me, I need to go ahead and get these drilled. I can't do it on camera because I have to, you know, hold it in a certain way so I make sure I get everything right. But it's, it's very basic. I just put the, put the um, fixture on. I'll cut these bolt heads off. I'll put the fixture on drill down through, put the fixture on, and drill through. All right, I've got the holes located here and on the side. So you can see them here and up here. Now it's time to plug all of these grab iron holes. Um, I will be replacing all the NBWs, well not that one or that one, but these ones of, and all because of the reason that I have to swap the location on the nose where the grab iron is and because I have to put new ones in here. So I want everything to be uniform and um, I'll be replacing all of that. So to plug these holes, it's very simple. Put some CA, I use a piece of tape, put CA on, it has enough surface tension to keep the CA bubbled. And I'll just dip a piece of, I use a Plastruck 15 thousandths uh, rod. And I'll just take a piece dip it into the CA and then just put it into the hole and let the CA bubble out around it because the CA will fill the rest of the hole and I can just shave that off and clean it up. So you see how it's going. I don't think I need to show you all of the holes but what you do need to do is before and I should have done this earlier before we do the front holes we have to drill those new the new uh, grab iron location so I'll just go in here use the uh, I use the uh, the bolt head as the guide. Actually, what you should do first, so that you get a nice flat surface to start your hole in, is is take a knife, cut off just the bolt head, and it'll leave you a, a nice clean surface that you can your eyeball can center on. So I'm going to go ahead and drill those. Then I'm going to fill them with um, rod like these. And I'll also do the backs and this one up top here. Well, all the holes are plugged. Let me zoom in. Let's see, is that in focus? There we go. So all the holes are plugged um, with the white styrene. Now I'll let that set up, and on the inside, I'll just clip them off where they go through. And on the outside, I'll, I'll just cut them flush with the hood as well as the NBWs that are there, sand it all down, and then re-drill um, where the holes are. You can see I already re-drilled, or I already drilled the, uh, where the holes are supposed to be on the front, and the NBW will go on the top of those ones. And I'll just basically do the same thing on the back. Okay, it's safe to say that the deconstruction of the hood is done. I've got the 
the grab iron holes filled. I've cut off everything and sanded it all smooth on all of here, here, on the sides here, on the top here, on the front, so it's all taken care of. Um, the parting lines on the hood and the dynamic brake hatch have all been sanded smooth, scraped and sanded smooth, so that's all ready for reconstruction. Um, one of the tricky parts, and it's pretty much the only, if, if they could, if Cotto would come to me and say, what would you change on our GP35 that would make you happy? You could only change or fix one thing. I would say the parting line on the back of this long hood. It is atrocious. And you have to do some very serious um, um, blending acrobats to get it to, to look right. Because if you do it wrong, if you look down the side here, you'll see the hood kind of go up and then it'll curve way in and you don't want that. If you don't sand it right, your point's going to be um, off center and, and such and it just, it's just a bear to, to work on. The rest of these parting lines, like on the side here and here and on the, on the low nose, those are easy to take care of. They're, they're there, but they're easy to blend. It's just this one right here on the, on the back of the long hood. So if they said, we're going to do one thing for you, and, but you can only pick one thing, and that would be the one thing. Everything else I can live with and, and work with. But that is just, oh man, it is just no fun. And um, to make it even worse, if you're keeping your NBWs, you have to work around those on this side. So that's really, really not a fun thing to do. But since I'm replacing all the NBWs, it was easier on this side. This side is okay, but you still have to really cut and blend. So that's the one thing I would change. But everything's done. And then I cut this hole in the top because when you put your cannon fan on, this motor on the bottom of the fan would hit the roof. So cut the hole in there and it'll fit right into it. So that takes care of all of this stuff and I can get started on the, on the uh, reconstruction. Well that takes care of the deconstruction of the hood. Now we get to work on the reconstruction of the hood, adding all the detail parts and, and things like that. So that's part two of the hood. Um, part three, of course, would be the painting and decal. But we're moving on to part two, and in the introduction to part two, we'll go over all the detail parts and, and what's going to be added. So if you made it this far, once again, I'm pretty sure this is a long video as well. I really appreciate it, and I hope you got some good tips and tricks and ideas out of this session.